equate range to root 3. Fine. Second question. You have uh, two minutes to solve the second question. If all of you get it right, we have a text. You, when you say no, you don't have trust on yourself or others. It aims towards that point, means the velocity is in that direction where the 4,9 point lies. That's not the highest point, that is the aim. Like if, if I throw object looking at that, the object is started going towards that point. But meanwhile it will just take because of that. So you can find the angle with the horizontal using that information. Initial angle of projection you can find out. Second. This. So this is u 
So velocity of x axis is what? This into cos theta. Yes or no? 2 root 5 cos theta is velocity of x axis. So u x is 2 root 5 into cos theta is what? 1 by root 5. So 2 meter per second is u x. Alright? Time is 1 second. So distance along x axis will be 2 into 1 because there is no extension along x axis. Velocity along x axis u x into t is your distance along x axis. So answer is 2. 2 comma 0. Understood? This you can say J advanced level. Only one question till now. Yeah, a little bit advanced. Getting into MIT is easier than getting computer science in IIT. Have you understood this? Please solve question number 3. You have 3 minutes. Simple, no? 30 degree element strikes. It is projected from a high edge. At angle 30 degree. It says it hits the ground. And right now, this velocity is making 45 degrees. This is initial velocity and this is the final velocity. Like this. Okay, all of you tried? All of you tried, right? Anybody got it? No one got it. Okay, I solve it. The hint is the velocity along x axis is constant. Velocity along x axis is constant, it doesn't change. So, initial loss is given. No, it is not given. Whatever it is, u cos 30 should be equal to what? V cos 45. The component of this velocity in that direction is V cos 45 or not? Yes or no? Yes. U cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Cos 45 is 1 by root 2. So V is root uh, V is the root V by 2 times Q. This is our first equation. Okay? Right? And along y axis you have U sin 30 velocity along y axis heat coil. Velocity along y axis finally will be what? Minus of u sin 45. Take component of this velocity, it will be like this and like that. Yes or no? What will be down will be v <coughs> sin 45 and horizontally will be uh, v cos 45. Alright? So you have these two equations. 1, 2, 3. So using this, you can find out what is u and v in terms of h. And then what is given is, now that the angle is 60 degree, what is the angle it makes when it strikes the ground? Right? So just play around with these equations, you get the answer. Okay, can you try it now? Tell me whether you are writing it. Just write down the equations. Don't try to solve it right now. Write down the equation, then when you look at the equation, you will see, oh, it can be done like that. In first scenario and in second scenario, displacement along y-axis is same. Don't bring in time in the equation. P should not come in the equation. Otherwise, that is a third variable. What you should use? V square equal to u square plus 2as along y-axis. So this is Vy square should be equal to Uy square minus of sorry uh, two plus two g 
into H is how much? H is H. Okay. So Vy is U sin 45 and Uy is this. So you can substitute that there. Okay. And when you are throwing it with angle 60 degree, now you are throwing it with 60 degree. You have to find the relation between the vertical velocity component here and vertical velocity component there when it hits the ground. So for the second case, Vy dash square is equal to u sin 60 plus 2gh. So using these two equations, guys pay attention here. Using these two equations, see you can write Vy in terms of uh, Uy is u sin 30, substitute that, this you substitute here. So you can rearrange these two equations, compare them and then you can get the value of Vy. You got it? Okay, only one person got it. See, I cannot spoon feed you each and every step. You have to write down yourself, do it yourself. I have, I have written all the equations that are required to solve. There are millions of questions. I cannot spoon feed you all the million type of questions. You need to understand how to solve the question. Right? How to analyze everything. Alright? Anyone got the answer? See, it is okay that you are taking a lot of time, but are you understanding that your speed is little less? You need to improve on your speed. That will come with practice. Time is the biggest factor when you write any exam. Fine, I'll do it now. It'll take a lot of time. Two particles are projected with same speed at different angles. They have same range. Range formula is what? U square sine 2 theta by 2 theta 1 by G. This is equal to U square sine 2 by G. Okay? This relation we got? So this is what this means that sin theta 1 cos theta 1 is equal to sin theta 2 cos theta 2. When this will happen? When theta 1 plus theta 2 is 90 degree. The ranges will be same when some of the angles are 90 degree. Okay? But anyways, even if you don't apply that, you can solve this. Now the, the time t1 and t2. Time of flight is what? To you sin theta 1 by g. T2 is what? To you sin theta 2 by g. So if you take a ratio, t1 by t2 is what? Sin theta 1 by sin theta 2. Yeah, we have to use that. Theta 1 plus theta 2 is 90 degree. So theta 2 is 90 minus theta 1. So sin theta 1 by cos theta 1. It is tan theta. Okay. The ranges will be same only when they are complementary angle. When sin theta 1 cos theta 1 will be equal to sin theta 2 cos theta 2. When sin theta 1 becomes cos theta 2 and cos theta 1 becomes sin theta 2. Sin theta 2. Okay? And that will happen only when some of the angles are 90. I hope you are seeing a difference between the school questions and these questions. Ninth. Okay, what is the answer? C for tag. Anybody else? D for donkey. Others? Should I do it now? I give you three more minutes. See, this is not the amount of time you should take. If you take this much time, better to leave the question. D. D. Two people are getting D. Okay, I, I'll give you a hint and then you can please try for another couple of minutes. Um, see, if initial loss is U and final loss is V, velocity along horizontal velocity should be constant. 
So u cos 60 should be equal to v cos 30. So you got a relation between final velocity and initial velocity. And displacement along vertical direction should be h. Now try it quickly. Because velocity along vertical axis is constant. U cos 60 is velocity of initially along x axis. V cos 30 is velocity finally along x axis. Both should be same. Huh? Why? Because there is no acceleration along x axis. Oh. That is the basic of projectile, right? Horizontal direction velocity is constant. That is what I am using. Huh? C. Okay, let me do it now. Velocity component along x axis remains constant throughout the projectile. That is what I am using here. Finally, velocity is v, its component along x axis is v cos 60. If initially is u, component along x axis is u cos 60. I am including the horizontal components. Understood? So, u is equal to root 3 times v. All of you got this? And then I am going to use uh, v square equal to u square plus 2as. I am going to use this equation along vertical direction. Because the displacement along y direction is given to me. I want to use that. Fine? So I will use this equation. I will not use s equal to unity plus half a d square. Because that will bring unnecessary the time factor in the equation. Yes or no? So I should write v sine of the final angle and u as u sine of the initial angle. Okay. 